Oh my goodness, hello BlizzCon! Welcome to the World of Warcraft q and I am your moderator for today, Jesse Cox. And I, like you, in the years past, have sat out there. And so I know that you are some of the best, most excited WoW fans there are. And so you have a lot of questions today. You've seen the panels. You have seen what the devs had to say. And it clearly was not enough. So. This year, we not only did some things a little differently, we opened up questions to those of you who could not be in attendance today, but also we tried to make it a little bit more fair for those of you who couldn't run to the front of the line to ask questions like we have done in years past. So after every panel, you could go to the Darkmoon Fair and deposit a question for the devs there. So without further ado and much of bother, let's get the devs out on stage. Your game director, Tom Chilton, Lead game designer, Ian Hazakostas. Lead game designer, Jay Wilson. Lead game designer, Luis Mariga. Art director, Chris Robinson. Creative director, Alex Fratiabi. And lead game designer, Matt Goss. Gentlemen, are you ready? No. Ready. Oh, yes. Not yet? Well, get prepared, because your first question comes from uh, one of my favorite people in the world. You know him and love him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. After you, sir. Okay. My question this year is about Illyria and Terralian. We were told they were returning in Legion, but I was thinking they never had a chance to see that the orcs weren't as evil as they were portrayed in the Second War. They missed the Maghar and never saw Thrall. So does that mean they might be part of the Horden Alliance being at each other's throats, which was also mentioned as a plot point? I'll take this one right here. Um, no. But um, when we finally, in Legion, discover Alaria and Turalyon, the way you view WoW will change. It'll, it'll up the game a bit. So um, nothing to do with that, but there's amazing things in store. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Our first online question, is there any hope of sub-races, such as Tonka or Dark Iron Dwarves being playable in the future? I'll, I'll take this one. So this is a, actually this was like the most voted or one of the most voted up questions amongst our community. There were like tens of thousands of votes for this. So I feel like a couple of things. Number one, I feel like it's important for us to sell the fantasy behind the races and the classes in our game. That's like a core feature of something we consistently try to support and, and grow. If we've successfully done that, I think the second part becomes then supporting that and adding more variety and customization within that system. So the easy answer is yes, we're going to do that. Um, we really love the idea. We have the characters in game. We're connected to them. We feel very strongly about that. The more difficult answer is, how are we going to do that? And, I, and we're going to continue to work on that and, and make it happen. All right, it's your turn. So Warcraft has always been about uh, community. So can we have affiliated guilds with cross-guild chat and scheduled combined raid scheduling? So yeah, something along those lines is definitely something that we would like to work towards. I think we recognize looking back at Warlords and how the group finder has played out and how increasing cross-realm connectivity has shaped the social landscape. There are more and more groups that transcend server boundaries and the traditional definition of what a guild means doesn't quite encapsulate them so neatly. Um, it's, I don't think it's something we're going to be able to do for Legion at launch, but it's definitely something that we want to work towards delivering to give you a way to stay in touch with and organize a group of friends with shared interests, whether it's a cross-server raiding guild, a cross-server battleground group, or anything else along those lines, as you, know, as you see fit. Excellent. Thank you very much. This next question is also one of the most highest voted. 
Will the achievement to unlock Flying in Legion be fully completable at launch? Well, it'll exist at launch, but it won't be fully completable at launch. So it will be completable in a later patch, um, much like the Warlord's achievement was. But it will be there right from the start, so you can make progress on it. All right. Evan. Hello. Uh, I'm Evan, representing Bone Chewer. Anyone out there? Bone Chewer? Anyway. So uh, my question is, what do you plan to do with Bolvar 4 Dragon in the future? Is he going to be in this expansion, or is he going to get his own gig? What's up? Well, that's a great question. Um, I will say this. This expansion in Legion, there's going to be a little cameo. We'll, we'll see Bolvar somewhere, probably the Frozen Throne, I guess. Um, and absolutely, in the future, beyond this expansion, we've, we've been talking about it, so we'll see. Right on, thanks so much. Thanks, sir. All right, our next online question. Will there be more cosmetic class quests, such as Green Fire? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> So uh, we, we definitely have a wide array of class quests in uh, this expansion, as you probably all know about with the artifact acquisition. Um, there are different class quests for every single one of those weapon acquisitions. Um, so we're definitely interested in class content, um, and that's something that we're focusing on for this expansion. But as to whether it will be stuff like, specifically like the green fire, we'll have to see. It might be green fire on your artifact weapon, for example. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Zen Tsu Nim. I'm the uh, add-on author for GTFO. Uh, <laughs> thank you. If you LFR, please use it. Uh, my question is uh, actually about the shared tap system that you introduced in Timeless Isle. Awesome for PvPE, and uh, I was wondering if that was going to be implemented for some of the older world content, uh, the older world raids, and, or I'm sorry, rares and uh, bosses. So we're actually looking in some ways to take that a step further even beyond that. Um, once you actually get into Legion, we're actually looking at revolutionizing the way tapping works in World of Warcraft period, in the outdoor world. Imagine if, rather than when one, one person hits a mob, it's locked down to everyone else. If individual mobs allowed up to, let's say, four or five people at most onto their tap list, and so you could all share loot, experience, and quest credit without necessarily needing to join a party. So when you go into a quest area and you see someone else there, you don't kind of grumble and immediately go in the opposite direction to avoid them. Well, unless, of course, they're the opposite faction, in which case you should do that or kill them, depending on your server type. But rather, and you also don't feel like, OK, let me send this person to tell, say, hey, do you want to group, even though you know that you're probably going to stop grouping in three minutes as soon as you're done with your quest and you go your separate ways, you can just cooperate organically um, without allowing for some of the more kind of rampant abuse of like an entire raid group zerging through and, and tagging things. So that's where we're looking to take tapping in general. Now, obviously, for major targets like named quest bosses, world bosses, and the like, we're still going to have open tapping that allows an unlimited number of targets. But yeah, we have exciting plans there. Can't wait to hear how it plays out in Legion. All right, thank you. So another really important question to the internet. Will you try to release one expansion per year, or are you going back to one every two years? Well, um, we still have a goal of launching expansions more quickly. Um, so that's something that we're trying to move toward. I don't know if, you know, when we'll get to one per year. Um, maybe next time, maybe never. Uh, we'll see. The overriding commitment is to quality for us, and that's ultimately going to trump release dates. Um, but that being said, we have built the team. We're trying to get more done so that we can have more content and so we can entertain you guys more effectively and, and better than we ever have before. To you, sir. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Dayton. I play Zal Production Water on Moonguard. Uh, my question for you today is, um, is Sargeras's tomb where the fallen gods' remains are, or is it just a monument? That's a great question. And right now, it's a monument. All right. Thank you. That may change. 
Another question from online. Are there any plans to improve guilds, such as guild housing or guild quests? That is a perennial favorite every year. We call, we call raid bosses guild quests. <laughs> but uh, obviously guilds are very near and dear to our hearts and they're very important to the general social structure of World of Warcraft. Um, and, and ultimately they really are a social structure more than anything else. Um, something that we would like to be able to do um, is give people the ability to essentially be in multiple guilds at some point so that you can have your guild of friends, your guild of raiders, your guild of PvPers, stuff like that. Um, that way you can essentially mix social circles. Now, it, it's possible that all the functionality won't be one-to-one -one if you're in some kind of like secondary guild or something like that. We still have yet to really design it out entirely, but that's kind of the general compass heading for us. Hi, I'm Starletta. And I'm asking, will there be a new PvP battleground in the Legion? No Brian up here, so I guess I have to take this one. No. <laughs> um, so we uh, are really putting our focus on the new honor system. Uh, obviously, battlegrounds are very, you know, something that's very important to us. Um, but we're really focusing on the new progression system, the new honor system that goes along with essentially all the battlegrounds. Um, although, I guess maybe if you wanted to t take a different spin on it, if you imagine all the current battlegrounds with a bunch of demon hunters in them, they're like totally new battlegrounds, all of them. <laughs> Will zones such as the Janai or Blood Elf starting zones change with the invasion of the Burning Legion? No, we don't have any plans to update those for Burning Legion. We do have Legion uh, invasions that are taking place all over the world, and uh, it's possible that some of those could strike some of the starting areas. Well, let's be serious. If you were the Burning Legion and you wanted to cause the maximum damage to concentrations of players in Azeroth, would you really start with the Exodar? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Take out the next generation of, of players. All right, your question. Hey, I'm Scar from Rebuff for Confidence on Malganus US, recruiting hunters for Legion. Uh, my question is, what is protecting Dalaran from being invaded or destroyed on the Broken Isles? That's a great question. And the Dalaran we see on the Broken Isles is upgraded dramatically. Um, you have to imagine a city of mages has some innate protections, but as you guys get through the expansion and actually kind of find out the actual secrets within Dalaran, you'll see exactly what's protecting it, and it's big. Thank you. Do you have any plans to resolve stories that began with Cataclysm? We've had five years to address the damage. That, you said that so angrily. It's an important question Does to me as well. it angry too? <laughs> I'm mad about it as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll say yeah, sure. <laughs> I can't give you an exact time or date, but we want to. We'll get, we'll get around to it. Your question. Hi, Corey Campbell, also Volstites, uh, Death Knight with the Convert to Raid team Threat Level Midnight, member of the Acarus IRC Death Knight community. Threat Level Midnight, totally recruiting DPS. So, won't people running Legion challenge modes only take players with optimal keystone affixes? So I think one key part, so to speak, of the keystone system is that all the affixes are actually standardized globally for a given week. So all keystones generated will point to a random dungeon and they'll have a power level that's appropriate based on, you know, the skill and the accomplishments of, of the holder. But if you have, you know, enraging at low health guys that blow up at, at, when they die, Everyone in the world will have that combination. And so you can think of it in a sense as like almost like Hearthstone Tavern Brawls, where every week you're going to have a new little twist on the rules, a new set of, of challenges to learn and master. And as you practice that week's runs, hopefully you get better at figuring out how to handle it. And then it's on to something new. You heard it here. We got this idea from Hearthstone, not from Diablo. <laughs> Thank you very much. When will the inventory system be updated, such as more bags for the bank? 
So I, I think I touched on it in the last panel too, like transmog seems like the biggest defender right now and that was one of the things we really wanted to, to address was to get all those items that you're holding on to just for their cosmetic look. Um, I mean, we're always looking for ways to improve it, but right now, I mean, the bank is for items, items are in it. We, we just want to make sure that we get as many of the items that you're not actually using or want to hold on to out of there as possible. Or that I you honestly can, don't uh, know what's going to go in my bank or void storage once we have the new transmog. Yeah. <laughs> Consumables. Sweet. Health potions. Fill it up with potions. Hi guys, I'm Dylan uh, Alduin on Kel'Thuzad, and I love the focus on class fantasy with Legion, but I have a question about warriors. Is Titan's grip for Fury warriors dead? Um, no. Um, the artifact is just too small. <laughs> so we're actually planning on taking the artifacts and sizing them up, but Titan's grip is alive and well. Great, thank you. We do think that holding two two-handers is a very distinctive thing for Fury Warriors, and, and we dig that. The next question is one that is near and dear to my heart. Can we get a clear lore answer to there being only one Burning Legion transcending all realities? Was the patch 6.2 Archimond the exact same Archimond who was killed at the end of Warcraft 3? Well, in an inflationary universe... <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. We got this expansion coming out called Legion that's gonna answer those questions. Um, the Archimonde thing? Yes, maybe. Um, <laughs> we're working out some kinks there. Um, but the, the expansion will absolutely get into the details of multi-legion versus singular legion and we'll, we'll get a clear answer. And it probably has something to do with Alaria and Turalyon. No, it doesn't. I'm kidding. We could have made it simpler by renaming them. Make them Archimad or something like that. Where were you when we were doing the fight? That's a great idea, Tom. Hey, uh, my name is Sean, but um, I know this has been actually answered already, so what the hell? Can we have more character slots per server? I know there was supposed to be, I think, one extra for the expansion, but I was curious if there's more. We're going to give you one, one more slot in Legion so that you don't have to delete any characters to roll a Demon Hunter. So make sure to use it on your Demon Hunter. Save it for that. OK, thanks. <laughs> or don't. Will Legion have new scenarios? So I think scenarios in the form that they existed in Mists as something that you queue for through the UI as you know a, a standalone system, no. But we've taken what we learned from making scenarios in Mists and integrated that type of gameplay into a wide variety of content. So I mean, in a lot of ways, the Broken Shore that Alex talked about yesterday, the, that begins the expansion, is a 40-player scenario. Um, there are single-player scenarios, and there are smaller group scenarios that will actually be integrated into the world quest system at max level, but they're more seamlessly part of the world rather than something that you just push a UI button to access while you're sitting around town. Hi. I'm wondering, what do I do if I want both early access via a pre-order and the physical collector's edition? Right, definitely a great question. So we've actually uh, supported this in the last few expansions, and what you can do is you can, you can pre-order using the digital, and you can use that, and then once you actually get your physical collector's edition, you can contact customer service, and essentially uh, they'll be able to switch it out for you at that point and get you kind of the difference. Okay, thank you. So... How will you prevent multi-role classes from having significant disadvantages in upgrading their artifact weapons like they have to do now with the legendary ring and going to buy a new one? So yeah, so definitely we, we people who want to play multiple specs actively will be able to claim and use and upgrade multiple artifacts to accompany those specs. Um, we, we don't want the, the stumbling block and we, to playing multiple specs to be that you have to go out into the world and feel like you need to do a lot more grinding or what have you to, to keep all those artifacts up to date. 
Um, I mean, instead, there should be more of a sense of reward and the fact that you get to access more of the unique story content from one spec versus the other. So I think we have a lot of catch-up mechanisms in place planned to let second and third weapons very rapidly get up to the power level of your main weapon. A lot of those mechanisms will also be of assistance to people who take a break or join the expansion later on so they don't feel like they're always behind the curve. I think the one area where there will be some differentiation is in the relics that Craig talked about on this stage just an hour or so ago. There, those are the standard item drops that you're getting from a boss, and when you get a really powerful holy relic, you are going to have to decide if you want to socket it into, let's say, your silver hand as a holy paladin or your ashbringer as a ret paladin. But that's not really very different from the world in which we live today, where you know, you're know you deciding on what trinkets you want to roll, what items you want to get for one spec or the other, and you need two separate sets of weapons to play many specs in parallel. All right. Hi, my name is Annie, and my question is, can we please have three specs? No. Just kidding. Um, sure. We'll yeah. do that. Matter of fact, if you're a druid, we're going to let you have four. Sure, why not? So yeah, in, in Legion, we're going um, to let you try spec and in the case of druid, quad spec, and in the case of demon hunter, dual spec. Sorry, demon hunters. So, yeah, absolutely. We've actually smoothed out the UI also, so uh, you don't even actually have to go and purchase your second or third or whatever spec. You can actually, just in the spec UI itself, you pick whatever spec you want, activate that spec, it'll remember your action bar and your talents and all that kind of good stuff. And there's also a default spec, so you no longer have that weird broken, oh, I forgot to spec and I have nothing, yeah. so. Yeah, no such thing as no spec anymore. Respect. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Another great question from the internet. Why are you removing multi-strike but not versatility? Yeah, Matt. Why? No pressure. So multi-strike for us, um, there's a couple reasons. One, uh, it is kind of just a different form of crit. And a lot of classes don't actually have really a fantasy for what multi-strike is. And, and we ended up having to weave it through a lot of our class design. So if you look at like a prod paladin, they actually have a special thing to deal with multi-strike so that it's still viable for them. Um, so we didn't really see the advantage for having crit and multi-strike anymore. So it, it seemed like it needed to go. So versatility, though. Um, versatility doesn't have that problem. And the other thing it does have is it has a defensive component, too, which makes it attractive to different people. So I think PvPers really like versatility right now. Um, tanks generally like versatility as well. And we like that niche for it. So yeah. I think it leaves us with a picture of stats where each one has a special identity and purpose. Like crit is do stuff burstier, haste is do stuff faster or do more of it, mastery is specialized at some specific component of your spec, and versatility is this all around mixed offensive defensive component. One thing I would ask to people who just hate versatility is whether you hate it because it's bad. Like if we just buffed it by 10% and it was on par with your other stats, would you mind it as much? Or is it just that you're so used to looking at items with this stat as a booby price? I'm not necessarily going to answer that more of a rhetorical question, but good thing to discuss. Another question from the internet. Will you introduce more catch-up mechanisms for alts, such as speeding up rip grinds? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we, we actually look at alts quite a bit, and we talk about them quite a bit. We, and I don't know if we really talked about it much in Warlords, but for the Legendary Quest, we actually had catch-up mechanics for alts in there as well, which, you know, helped out. Um, and for artifacts, like Ian just talked about, that's something that, you know, we, we look into when we have dual spec, or, you know, you're, you're leveling your second spec or your third spec um, artifact, maybe we can take that system in for alts as well. I think, in general, philosophically, we avoid like strict account-wide things because part of the part of the point of playing an alt is is doing things on that alt and having a feeling of progression. But it does make a lot of sense for things to be faster, a bit faster, the second time you do it on a second character or the third time you do it on a third character. And we realize that more and more people want to maintain and actively play alts. So it's definitely something we're aware of when we design any system in terms of striking a balance between something that's going to be interesting and engaging the first time around, but not feel really daunting if you're looking at it a second or third time. Next question. 
Will we see any event like the AQ gates during Legion? <laughs> as, as the person that implemented 90% of that, God, I hope not. <laughs> um, no, um, it's, there, there are things kind of like it. You know, we, we talked briefly about invasions happening, um, and those are happening all across the world, and, and it will take participation on kind of a server level to beat them back. Um, so, so kind of. Um, moving forward, uh, we talk about it all the time. We talk about that type of um, event activity. Um, so we're, we think fondly of it. We just got to find the right time, the right place, um, and then do it. So, yes. 800,000 linen required to open the Tomb of Sargeras. You know, here here. here's a fun fact about that, Ian. I, I tripled the numbers that Chris Earhut gave me because I'm a jerk. <laughs> but it worked. Will Karzan be relevant in the Burning Legion? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, Karzan is a place of tremendous importance. You know, as we look to unearth the secrets that we're going to need to prevail against the Burning Legion, a lot of those secrets and a lot of that heritage is kept in the Tower of the Guardian, and that means Karazhan. You'll, you'll By show seeing, of applause, would you guys of like to see Karazhan as a five-player dungeon in, say, patch 7.1 or something like that? What? What? That's crazy talk, Tom. You're nuts. Good feedback. That could never happen. All right, it's that time of the Q&A for this question. Will we receive any hint about what's below Tiras Fall Glades? Yes. In fact, one of the artifact acquisition lines will shed some light on what's going on down there. Spoilers, man. These... I didn't say which, and I didn't say what was going on down there. It doesn't even come close to spoilers. It's true, it's true. Seriously. I guess you didn't. The obvious answer is dead bodies. There's lots of dead bodies below Tiras There's Fall always Glades. dead bodies. I think that's actually where the AQ event is. Where the AQ event? Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that's where it's going to happen. Where is Rathian in Legion? He's definitely there. Cool. So, I think he's thanks still in Pandaria, right? Well, actually, actually um, he may have some interest in the zone of High Mountain, which of course features Notharian's lair, and that is a person of, of some interest to to Rathion. So, if he were to be lurking, it might be a good place to look for him. Or under Tearsfall. We don't know. <laughs> Just don't expect him to look the way that he looked before. Spoilers. I know. <laughs> Will there be any more interesting raid mechanisms like the Karazhan chest event? No, we have no more interesting raid mechanisms planned in Legion. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Don't worry, in the spirit of dumbing things down, we'll turn it into a checkers event. <laughs> Any chance we'll see an event like the Battle for Undercity ever again? Well, again, <laughs> is the guy that implemented that, I hope not. Um, that's, that's an interesting question, right? Because what is the Battle for Undercity anyway? I mean, really, because it's gone. You, you have no idea what the Battle for Undercity is. It's, it's over. Um, but it's, uh, it's something that is, I consider it just kind of a really long evolved scenario, if you think about it, right? Um, it just existed when we didn't have scenario tech. So yeah, we will. We will see things like that um, in Legion and beyond um, as we continue to kind of improve uh, our storytelling through things like scenarios and longer events. So yes, absolutely. As long as people want to continue making stuff like that and punishing themselves, yes. Is there any way to make old world materials relevant for professions? Maybe. Yeah, it's kind of a, uh, it's something we, we, we would love to be able to do that. Um, a lot of times, though, the, it, it's what the expansion says to us. And in this case, we have, you know, all new materials. Um, it's hard to do because, I, I don't know, I, I think my uh, uh, reagent bank right now on one of my characters is just full of linen, so I'd be able to just min-max everything out right away. But I think that's kind of the problem of a lot of those. And, you know, Legion, 
we have so many cool things in Legion that we can make materials out of. It seemed, seemed like the right fit. We definitely can make them relevant. Whether you would actually enjoy yeah. that is debatable. Linen bandages is going to be the big comeback. Will we get more lore on Forsaken, Worgen, Torin, or Gnomes? Dan Gray, mean? Well, in the game. Oh, in the game? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Um, always, yeah. There's, there's stuff coming up. Um, you know, we've got a lot of uh, Torin esque things in High Mountain that should give, um, shed some light on things. Um, I would definitely argue that there's going to be some Forsaken lore coming up. Um, gnomes. I, I love gnomes. I, I do. And so we're going to probably not do anything for gnomes. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. We'll totally do something for gnomes. Right, Luis? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Gnomes yeah. are an important and underappreciated part of the Alliance. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome to their day in the sun. No, there's, there's exciting new things on the gnome technology front that I'm making up on the spot that you're going to see in Legion. I, where, where, I did the, where did the moose horns come from, Alex? How did that happen? The moose horns? So some kind of unholy union behind, between a torrent and a moose? That, that's totally what happened. Okay. Right? There are a lot of moose in High Mountain. You do the math. <laughs> Alex, you left out Worgen. Gilnans do play a big, big role in this expansion as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. That Good point. I missed that part of the question because I wasn't listening. Okay, so, will old gods feature in Legion in any way? Yes, kind of. Yes. Actually, not kind of. They, they totally will. That's probably what's under Tears Fall. Shit. <laughs> probably spoiled something. Will there be more than one raid per tier in Legion? Um, well, clearly we have, you know, two separate raid zones planned for the initial launch of Legion. Looking ahead to future patches, I think there's a, there's a decent argument to be made that some of our huge monolithic zones that we've made, while they are awesome and epic in scope, like the 13 boss Hellfire Citadel or 14 boss Siege of Orgrimmar, might actually be better served if we were to break them up and have, let's say, a six boss raid and a seven boss raid with varying environments, a bit more choice for what you want to do on a given day, but still fitting in together as part of the same larger tier. So with that in mind, do you plan to make smaller raid dungeons for players who don't have time for a 7 or 10 boss raid? I, I think it's actually not so much about size, though obviously 13-14 does get to be pretty huge, as much as layout. I, I think that we've, we've tried to do a lot with non-linear layouts. You know, if you look at Heimall, if you look at Foundry, um, the choice built into them, as well as the shortcuts that you can unlock, I think are designed in many ways to cater to the guild that only raids one or two nights a week and can't necessarily afford to fully re-clear you know, seven or eight bosses just to begin working on the thing that they're currently stuck on. So we're very mindful of the need to offer the ability to choose your path through raids and unlock new shortcuts. So will you be bringing back reforging? No. Yeah, I mean, we, we, I think we talked a lot about it last, uh, last BlizzCon, like with the, you know, gems being secondary stat with food. Um, we think we have quite a bit of customization in your secondary stats, and reforging just doesn't, doesn't feel necessary anymore, and Ian's going to correct me. Maybe only reforging to versatility? What do you think? Oh, yeah. Actually, that's good. Yeah, as much versatility as you want. So what will happen to our artifacts in the expansion after Legion? Um, exact details, TBD. Um, I think the artifacts, so one of the things that we need to be mindful of when we, when we create large expansive systems in WoW at this point is what they're going to mean carried forward into the future. And when we constrain something to a single expansion, it gives us a lot more freedom to go crazy with the complexity, the depth, the power of that system. I think the garrison in Warlords is a great example there. You know, your garrison is very much staying in Draenor, and you're going to leave it behind when you move on. And I think the artifact weapons, the artifact weapons um, are something that you're really going to customize and, and develop and will become a part of you over the course of the expansion. 
but we're not necessarily, we're not really committing to, okay, you're never getting another weapon again, ever again, no matter how many expansions we make, or all of these perks and traits are going to be a core part of your class and spec forever. So I think we see the artifact as something that is inextricably tied to Legion. Um, it may be something that you hang up over your mantelpiece as, you know, a memento of the war against the Legion in years past when you're a retired adventurer, but it is something that, you know, you will not be wielding forever. But while you have it, it's going to be essential and it's going to be a major, major part of the expansion. Do you ever think you're going to put in some sort of bad luck protection mechanic into the game for rare, sought-after items that never drop after three years of trying? I, I think uh, so. We have, you know, we have some things I, I, uh, to do with bad luck protection in our current content. Going back in time and uh, adjusting those. I mean, we take a look at them every once in a while just to make sure that we're not being, you know, too unfair with them. But part of the coolness of those things is is how rare they are and how um, hard they are to get. And so we don't want to stomp on that too much. Like if you had a guaranteed chance that you'd get it after a certain amount, like I, I don't know how exciting that would feel to most people. So we leave a lot of those alone. I think there's also a really big difference when you're talking about a power item where, you know, going weeks and weeks without seeing your fourth set piece or that essential trinket feels like it could really handicap you versus a mount that is, or a pet that is by definition, just super rare. You know, when we talk about cosmetic things like mounts and pets, there's a wide variety of ways of obtaining them. Some of the things that you have to, you know, do something really skillful for, others require a lot of time investment, and others just require luck and persistence. And that's just kind of the nature of them. There aren't many, but those that are there are important because of that, like Matt said. Where is the dance studio? I thought under, I saw it in Warlords. Under Tears Fall? Yeah, it's in, the, it's in the garrison, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. It might be. Still a feature oh. we'd love to do someday, but... Gonna have to find the animation time for it somehow. Do you plan to introduce any sort of classic realms that allow players to play at previous expansion levels? We do not plan to do that. Um, there tends to be a lot of uh, emotional desire for that, although uh, when other MMOs have tried that, they don't actually tend to survive for very long. Um, there are a lot of complexities with that because you get the old, it kind of has to be a bundle where you get the old hardware, the old code, because the old code's meant to run on the old hardware, the old data, the old bugs, all that kind of stuff. And the, of course, the natural expectation is that, oh, well, you, you would fix all that stuff. But kind of maintaining that many different versions of the game is just not really feasible, um, particularly in a world where people that are playing the game right now really want more content, not less. Will artifacts in Legion lock characters into using them? even though that particular type of weapon type might not be their favorite or what they desire aesthetically? Um, yes, sort of. So when we set out to make artifacts, we knew that we wanted to define really unique fleshed out weapons with deep backstories and identities. And in many cases that meant committing to a particular type of weapon. It meant saying, okay, when we make these dual rune blades for the Frost Death Knight, they are two swords. They're not either two swords or maybe one big one if you want to play two-handed. And so, yeah, there is some element there where we know that some people who prefer a different type of gameplay are going to feel like their artifact weapon isn't ideal. But we focused on really just making the weapons as cool and as defined as we could make them. Now, in terms of pure you know, aesthetics and visible appearance, while you can't transmog other things to look like your artifacts, if you want to transmog your artifact to look like something else, you do have the ability to do that. So if you just absolutely hate the idea of wielding an axe, but you really want to play a spec that has an axe, you can make it look like a sword or something. I think you'd be kind of crazy because the art's really cool, but you could do it. So how will racial variations of classes be represented in the class hall? So, uh, uh, sorry, go for it. It kind of varies case by case, so depending on what class we're talking about, different uh, races will be represented there, but definitely the fantasy that we're trying to go for is that the Alliance and the Horde, traditionally, they, they've gone at it, right? But right now the Legion is invading, and you, as the leader of your class, are bringing all the, sub, the subclasses or the, the subgroups within your class together to confront the common enemy. 
So, are we ever going to get any Alliance character development that doesn't result in a character dying or being lost? No. No. Okay. I mean, really, if you think about it, everything eventually results in dying. It's just a matter of, you know, time frame. Sorry, Alliance. That's very happy. But don't worry. Anytime something dies, we find a way to bring it back. That's a good point. So going back to class halls, is it possible inside them to chat freely with the opposing faction? No, the language barrier still exists. Um, it, the class hall is a shared space. You will see plenty of other paladins. Many of them may not be of your own faction, but you know, just because you are tentatively cooperating towards a, you know, a common goal doesn't mean that you could suddenly speak each other's language. There is one exception. So we're trying it for now. We'll see if it holds here in beta, but demon hunters can speak demonic to each other. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. So pre-made groups. Are you looking into making these easier to plan events with strangers, considering how open raid works? Yes. Um, I, th I think, you know, open raid is a great site. Can't recommend it enough to, you know, find people to you know, pursue shared interests, shared activities with. Um, we're really happy with how the pre-made group finder ha has taken off and has made it easier than ever before for people to find groups to do things like raids, mythic dungeons, PvP, and really everything else. Um, it's something we want to continue to expand and provide support for in-game. I think this kind of touches on a question from sort of the beginning of the Q&A where we were talking about, you know, the state of guilds and, and, and social networks that span servers. That's an area that we really want to explore and do more in. So in Legion, will we see an appearance by any of the alternate universe heroes? No. Well, heroes. Yeah. Is Gul'dan a hero? Is Gul'dan a hero? Yeah. It's my hero. No, he's, so yes. he's not Jesse. Don't get mad. Um, not on the outset. We'll see. TBD. Will we see any more Gilneas? Luis. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Gen Greyman plays a big part in this expansion, and we'll also run into Gilneans that fled separate from the group of players that got afflicted by the curse. So we'll, we'll get a little bit of a different angle on their story. So a new PvP system without PvP gear, what kind of gear are we getting? So, take it. Um, we will be dropping uh, PvP gear in strong boxes um, and in uh, weekly quests. Uh, it will be equivalent to the kind of gear you can get in the world or in dungeons or in raids. It'll be based upon your um, arena rating or your rated battleground rating, whichever one's higher. Um, and pretty much anything we've talked about for items, um, you can expect to see in that gear. Will we be seeing the final expansion boss during the leveling experience and or early raids? Yes, definitely. We love doing that. We love giving you a taste of the things you're going to kill eventually. So um, absolutely, it's a huge part of uh, storytelling for us in WoW. It's a huge part of um, building up the characters themselves. So yeah, absolutely want to do that. We're, we are doing that, yeah. Do you plan to make raid finder or mythic raid finding flex size? So, um, I mean, raid finder theoretically is, is flex size in that it uses the same flexible tech. You know, we, we try to match make groups of 25 players, but if a few DPS drop, you'll see that everything immediately scales down so that you can just go ahead and pull rather than having to wait for backfilling. But ultimately, I mean, if anything, we would probably use flex to make it go up above beyond that size, but we already feel like we're bumping up against the highest threshold of like what works socially and keeping any sense of personal responsibility there. So I think you know, with Raid Finder, it mostly boils down to the ratio of tanks to healers to DPS. We did reduce the number of healers required to start Raid Finder groups and kind of rebalanced accordingly to help the queues go more smoothly there. Now, Mythic, that's a whole separate question. Um, I've definitely heard, you know, 
feedback, questions, concerns from mythic guilds that are you know, struggling to field a 20-player roster consistently and are asking, could we do 15, could we do 10, could we do flex? Um, the answer, flex, I think, would be tremendously problematic for all the reasons that we discussed a couple of years ago when we first announced flexible rating and that structure when applied to mythic rating in particular. That is to say that while we've gotten better at tuning over the course of the expansion with respect to raid size, there are still no, there are a lot of inconsistencies, you know, and people who've raided Hellfire Citadel can attest to the fact that we had to make a number of hot fixes to improve the tuning on fights like Gorefiend or Archimond or others at smaller raid sizes. On Mythic, no matter how well we got it, that's also the exact same audience that's going to say, well, okay, the right number for this boss is 13, and the next boss is 18, and so, all right, you five, sit around and just be here for when we need you. Don't go anywhere. Sorry, you're not going to get any loot or have any fun. That's not the experience we want to create. Sorry. Now, as for individual raid size, and is 20 the right number? I think in a game that now is going to have 12 classes, the answer continues to be yes. I think that tuning for 20 players allows us to assume a certain number of moving parts. It allows us to assume that you have one of every class for the most part, that we can do things like you can break your raid up into two or three smaller groups, and each of those groups has enough meat to it to actually be a cohesive unit. And ultimately, and I know this is, you know, isn't necessarily a satisfying answer, keeping guilds together and recruiting and managing a roster is hard at any size. I mean, I remember personally as a player, leading a guild that was a 40-player guild that was, when we went to a 25-player rating in Burning Crusade, breathing a sigh of relief and saying like, oh, finally, you know, like my roster struggles are over. It's going to be so easy to field 25 because, wow, that's such a smaller number. And then fast forward a few months, your roster naturally shrinks to like 28 or so, and then you find yourself with 22, 23 people logging on for a 25-player raid, and you're exactly where you left off. So I think we'd like to do more to make it easier to find people to raid with, to find abilities to grow your guilds, and for players to look for guilds with you know, like goals. And that's how I think we can help solve the problem, not by moving the number from 20 to 15 or to any other specific number. Is there any chance we'll see more classes getting new roles, such as uh, Warlock Tank? Um, no. Um, right now, we're really focused on Legion and what's great for Legion and the fantasy of each character class and maximizing that rather than trying to divert a, a class off into something that's really not the fantasy of that class. Um, we've got a lot of great tank characters and healers and you know, we don't necessarily need warlocks also doing that as well and, and other classes. So no plans at this time. So how will we find groups for the new Keystone Challenge Dungeons? So Legion Challenge Dungeons are not going to be something that is part of the looking for group random matchmaking system because ultimately they are about sort of a shared challenge. There is one person who is putting their Keystone up at risk essentially when you start the run. Um, so the plan is the group finder is going to be the great place to do this as, long, as well as obviously your guild and, and your social circles more broadly. I think one of our goals with the system though, because the keystones themselves are going to be relatively hard to come by, having a keystone that is still yet to be burned that will yield loot when used is actually a great commodity. So unlike a lot, of, a lot of things, like a world boss today, where maybe if you miss your world boss kill on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you're looking around on Sunday to find people who want to do it, it can be hard to find people who haven't done it yet for the week. If you have a challenge keystone that's still available to be used on a Sunday, you should have people lining up, wanting to group with you, wanting a shot at the rewards that that's going to bring. And so you, know, you get to kind of call the shots, and we don't think it will be difficult to find people to help you in that endeavor. That way you can be an elitist jerk for a day and say, I'll take you and you, but not you. Can you address split rating in Legion? Um, yes, um, but I don't really have a satisfying answer. So I really hate split rating. I've talked to a lot of people this, like here at BlizzCon, at other events online, in high-end guilds. No one likes the feeling of pressure at the very, very high end to gear, run, and play four or five different characters solely for the purpose of running multiple raids to funnel loot to the very, you know, the ones who are going to receive it. I don't know that there's a great way to stop it, other than like 
personal loot being the default mandatory loot game-wide. That would solve the problem. I think that would have some other collateral consequences. So it's something I'd love to hear further suggestions about, love to hear discussion about. Um, if there's a way of doing it in a targeted way, I think it'll make the experience better for everybody, you know, because I know there's that downward pressure from the highest echelons that tends to trickle downward where you feel like you need to do this thing that isn't really enjoyable in order to compete. I mean, alts are great, but our general philosophy with alts is that we want you to play alts because you want to play the alt. You want to do something to progress that alt for its own sake, for a change of pace, rather than that, you know, you have this alt solely to feed your main. Will the old Nefarian encounter in Blackwing Lair gain a new Demon Hunter class call? Yes, of course. Um, when we added Monk, we went back and updated the Nefarian encounter. So if you haven't fought Nefarian on a Monk recently, go check it out. He has something special for you. Um, we'll have to do something on the Demon Hunter. Maybe, maybe double jump related. Like just off the top of my head, maybe he just like makes you jump repeatedly and after like quintuple, octuple jump, you just fall and take a bunch of fall damage. That feels like the kind of thing Nefarian would do. So, uh, going down the row of panelists here. In Legion, what is the one thing that you think people may not notice, but is something you really, really, really like, and you think they should sort of check out when they get into the expansion? We're starting at the other end, right? Sure. <laughs> And I'm going to steal what you would say. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that uh, one of the things that's going to be very interesting, actually, is, is going to be kind of hunting down a lot of these new uh, legendary items. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for players to ident identify which ones they really are most interested in and kind of maximize their chances at getting them, um, run the content that, uh, that they want to run in order to be able to get it. Um, I think that they, the ability for those to have transformational effects on your character and, and cause you potentially to change what your talents may ordinarily be or, or, or maybe even change direction in your artifact tree could be really interesting. Um, I think most of the big features and systems are stuff that's already been covered this weekend. Um, something small, I've seen a couple of people beginning to pick up on it at the demo station and looking at some of the streams online. We have a lot of awesome UI improvements just coming to the basic interface in Legion. You know, selection circles, nameplates, cast bars, a lot of things that I think are going to make the game just out of the box, much more readable, much more usable, and, you know, just a better experience all around. Um, we made some pretty cool improvements in Legion to especially for melee characters, to some of the effects, some of the animations, the new sword trails in particular, or weapon trails, I should say, I think are really, really awesome, and I think people are going to really enjoy them. I think if we do our job right, people won't notice the scaling levels. They'll, they'll just, it'll just feel natural. The, the, the mobs will be your levels, and it'll feel awesome that you can go do any level up zone in any order. And I think we'll, we'll see a really, really cool implication in terms of gameplay. It means you can group with more people that might be different level than you. It also means that the alt gameplay level up experience is very, very different each time. So really excited about that. That was my second choice. <laughs> So this doesn't necessarily directly answer that, um, but there is something that I feel like is conspicuous in its absence, which is uh, class accessories, and um, something that people have asked about quite a bit. If you remember a while ago, we came out with a, a blog talking about how we wanted to add more class accessories to really sell the fantasy behind the classes, and I feel like that's something that we don't do as well as we could right now. Um, so how that went down was we, uh, we were going into that. We, had, we actually have built some of those models. We've done some of the, uh, a lot of the concepting at this point. And uh, when we started working on Legion, uh, Tom or somebody had come to me and said, hey, we, we kind of were jamming back and forth on ideas about how that would go down. And he's like, actually, we've got this whole system coming up in Legion that, that somewhat overrides that. And I was like, Phew. and then he went, and it's, uh, it's called Artifacts. And I went, oh, OK, awesome. That's good. We can do that. So um, basically what it was is that as we went in to start working on artifacts, we decided that and took a look at what that looked like and all the concepting and, and that process that we went through. There was a lot of overlap between class accessories and what we're going to see in the artifacts, whether it be Librams or supportive objects that you get along with the artifacts you'll be wielding. So uh, we're still going to work on that. I definitely want to put more time into it. I definitely want to get back to doing class accessories. And now that we're at a point where we work through artifacts and we, and we learned all the lessons and figured all that stuff out in that process, I think now is a great time to go back and re-ask that question about what, what is left 
to fulfill that fantasy for each class and really kind of hone in on that at this point. Good answer. Thank you. How many people here have played the Demon Hunter intro experience on the floor? That's, that's quite a lot of you. Um, so you may have noticed that we have some new um, tech for storytelling, so to speak, uh, the talking head stuff. Um, we, we really want you to pay attention when those pop up. Um, but did you know that Legion is the expansion that has the most VO of any expansion we've ever done? So, and it, and it is super cool. And what that actually means is um, when you're out in the field and you're battling various bad guys, um, practically every world group out there in Legion has aggro lines and piss lines and things like that. So you'll be getting a lot more of that kind of interaction and that kind of immersion when you're out in the field along with Talking Heads and along with a couple of other cool storytelling tools. Yeah, I think for, for me it's a lot about, it's not like one feature, but it's sort of the, the goal of the team to get back into dungeons and have that five player experience be really cool again. Um, Keystones for me in the, in, the, in the whole challenge dungeon, that is something I'm really, really excited about to see. And, and from the item side, we're really happy to, to help support that as well. Um, just, you know, I don't know. I didn't play nearly as much dungeons as I usually did in Warlords, and I'm hoping we do more. And then going down one more time uh, down the line, if you can mention it, your favorite class spec, uh, let's do artifact weapon. Can you say that? Sure, we can. Capable of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of pure aesthetic, I'd have to go probably with uh, the, the axes for the, for the Blood Death Knight. Those things are crazy, crazy cool looking. Um, in terms of functionality, um, well, Ashbringer is one of the first ones that we actually fully fleshed out, and so far it's looking really cool. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, Fellow Malorn, the Fire Mage Runeblade. I, th I think when we talk about a caster sword, I think there's a certain challenge in making a large, visually impressive sword that looks not like it was meant to actually hit people with, but like an intensely magical conduit of power. And I think that weapon and its variants just deliver on that incredibly. And man, the acquisition quest. It, you have to check it out when you get there. It's, it's a special one. Um, I'm highly biased, um, but I'm going to say Holy Priest because that's what I play. And that's primarily the artifact I paid attention to because that's what I play. I'll say I, I can't wait to play Demon Hunter live. Havoc Demon Hunter is so fun to play. I can't wait for you guys to check it out. And I, in spite of that, though, my favorite artifact has to be Ashbringer. There's nothing that comes close. Uh, man, I still want to plead the fifth on this one because there's all these artists that worked on all these amazing weapons, and if I say one, then I'm, the, I'm that guy that said, like, which one was my favorite. Um, but, yeah, I guess I'll go there. I, I like the Blades of the Fallen Prince is the, uh, death knight, the icy death knight sword, and I think I'm a sucker for that kind of gothic, you know, the gothic horror stuff a little bit, and the, the fact that we brought some of that into WoW, WoW really resonated with me. I'm with Chris. Um, Blades of the Fallen Prince are mine as well, and for good reason. I mean, you've got an artifact that you're making out of the remnants of Frostmourne, so that's pretty cool. You guys are all wrong. <laughs> the right answer is Eagle Spear, because Melee Hunter is amazing, and really, I was one of those people who thought it was viable in vanilla, and I'm so happy to see it come back, so... All right, and uh, one final question. I think it's the most important. Is Jaina a dreadlord? <laughs> is, that, is that a real question? Uh, yeah, it's, right on, it's on this card right here. Oh, just... wow. Yeah, sure, she is. She, no, she's not. <laughs> is now canon. Empty. She's not a dreadlord. Hey, can I, by the way, before we go, I want to apologize to the gnome lovers out there, because I know right now on my Twitter feed, they're asking for my heart to do weird gnome things with, and I need my heart. So I'm sorry. I love you, gnome lover people, gnomes. 
I, I kind of apologize to you guys too. I think I've offended that entire group of players multiple times. Yeah, me, me too. All right, well, that's it. Thank you guys, and thank you all for watching.